Today we are going to be teaching our dogs the stay command. Now before you teach the stay command, you want to have your dog at least understanding how to go to a climb platform. I call it climb, some people call it place, it's just an elevated bed. Anytime I teach a dog stay, I always start with the climb bed because it's the easiest stay to teach our dogs. And I teach all stays the exact same way. So it becomes very easy for the dog to learn what a stay means depending on where the dog is. So we have sit stay, down stay, we have the climb stay or the place stay, heel stay. So loose leash walking is a stay command. It's a mobile stay, but it's still a stay because our dog has to maintain a position relative to us. So that's a stay as well. And before I do loose leash walking, I like to teach the dog the climb stay, then the down stay, then the sit stay, and we progress as the dog starts to understand the concept. We also want the dog to know how to follow the leash. So we wanna teach our dogs leash pressure. Now I just introduced him to leash pressure today. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is changing the rules a little bit. And so what I mean by that is normally when the dog breaks the position, we'll see how he responds. I just guide them back on. And then when they're back in the position, I tell them good dog. Now, if I get a little bit of resistance from him with the leash, since he's not fully trained on it, I'm gonna help him with the food. Normally, when a dog breaks a stay, we don't wanna put them back in the stay and then give them food because that encourages them to break the stay. They go, oh, okay, I break the stay, you put me back on, I get a treat, and they'll continue to break the position. This is where we start to use what I call teachable moments. I talked about this in one of my other videos. So a teachable moment is when a dog makes a mistake, like breaking a stay or violating a boundary, and then I simply show them the preferred behavior. When I tell a dog wrong, that's the word that I use for a teachable moment, I'm not punishing the dog. I'm just showing them what I want them to do. So it's very, very similar to command. Think about it more like uh, reverse or rewind your behavior. You broke the stay, I want you to go back to the stay. So I'm gonna show you how this looks. I'm gonna start by using a food lure. He doesn't know the verbal command for climb yet. When we add the verbal command, we say the command, climb, then we show the dog the physical cue and we can give the dog a reward. So since I gave him a reward, he's now in a climb stay. And so to reinforce it, I'm just gonna give him treats. I don't say stay, you can if you want, but I do the implied stay. So I'm just giving him a bunch of treats right now. The leash is nice and loose. I'm gonna step back, yes, and then I'm gonna come back and reward. So yes is his continuation marker. Yes, it just means he's going to get a treat. Now, if he breaks the position, he doesn't get the treat. So he's not gonna get it there. I'm gonna wait at least five seconds. Now I can reward him for duration. If I rewarded him the moment he went back on, then that encourages them to break the position. But if you wait at least five seconds, now you're rewarding for duration. I'm gonna drop the leash. Yes, give him a piece of food. So I'm giving him feedback. Yes, give him a piece of food. Wrong, so there's the wrong. I calmly grab the leash, I bring him back to the platform, good dog, but no treat. And if he maintains the position at least five seconds, yes, we can give the dog a reward. And again, I'm gonna create distance, wrong. So there he broke the position. I calmly come back to him, I grab the leash, and I take him back to the position, good boy, wrong. And you can say wrong many times. Remember, it's not a punishment. Your dog shouldn't hear wrong and go, oh no, what did I do? They should go, what is it you would like me to do? Drop the leash, wrong. And also if he steps back like he did right there, good boy, very nice. And again, I wanna wait so I can pay duration in the position. Now he's doing a good job, so I'm gonna reward him. Very nice, I'll give him a couple pieces. Yes, I take a step back, I come back and I give him some more food. Very nice, buddy, yes wrong. Good. So he stepped back and he's responding pretty well to the wrong, even though I haven't done a climb stay. The only stay that you can say that I've done is a crate stay. When I open the crate door, I don't let him come flying out. And the very first time I was teaching him this for the first four or five days, he would jump out wrong and I'd push him back in, jump out wrong. And I'd have to do it for three minutes before he would stop jumping off the platform or jumping out of the climb, I or the crate. And so he knows the word wrong already. Yes, just from doing the crate stay. Yes, very nice. And you can see how I'm increasing distance. Yes, and I'm coming back and paying him. And remember wrong is yes, 
what I like to call a reinforcement event. I'm reinforcing something I want the dog to perform wrong. So what do I want him to do right now? I want him to go back to the bed. So nice and calm. We take him back. Yay, good puppy. We don't have to run at the dog going, no, 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 no. We don't have to get angry or anything ridiculous like that. We calmly say wrong. We enter the event and that event is over. Yes the moment the dog gets back on the platform. And I do stays outside of my normal obedience because stays, yes, are very boring. This isn't super fun. I mean, he's enjoying it because he has a very high food drive. Yes, and somebody asked about that in one of my other videos. They said he has a lot of food drive. How did you do that? And by making them work for food in the early stages and making it fun, you know what, I shouldn't say work for food. What I should say is we make the dogs play for food. That's what we do. I've never made this dog work once in his life. He's only played and he's played quite a bit. So we have him play for food, not work for food. And that builds a really strong positive association and it makes them want to do more of it. So that's how we build the food drive. But also he has really good genetics. Uh, he came from a really, really excellent breeder. And I know some people are against breeders, but I'm a huge advocate for good breeders because if only good breeders existed, shelters and rescues would not exist. Shelters and rescues are a byproduct of bad breeders, backyard breeders, indiscriminated breeding, people wanting to breed the Malinois because they saw it in the movie John Wick 3. That's what causes dogs to end up in the shelters and rescues, not good breeders. So I'm a huge advocate of good breeders and he comes from a really, really excellent breeder that breeds for all the certain characteristics and traits that you would want from a working line German Shepherd. So he's bred for the sport of Schutzen. So Schutzen, it's known as IGP. It's a sport that involves three parts, which is tracking, obedience, and protection. And I'm currently training with a Schutzen club out here in Oregon. And so each week or every other week, depending on the schedule, I meet up with them and we do Schutzen training. And if you want a dog that does have very high prey drive and play drive and bite drive, then you're going to want a working line. Not always, but for the most part, but if you do get a dog from a working line breeder, you definitely want to give that dog a job. I know I'm just kind of talking right now about random subjects while I'm training him because the stay is really easy. You can see when he breaks the position, that's when I say wrong and I just build distance. Yes. And then I can come back and reward wrong. So a wrong can override a yes. So he stepped off. So I'm not going to give him the treat. I'm going to wait at least five seconds. Good. He's doing it. Now I'm going to give him a reward. And this day we don't. Oh, he almost broke it there. Good job, buddy. And he's right on the edge. And when I do a stay, I like to give myself little goals, but it's not mandatory. So for example, on this session, I want to touch the cabinets. Yes. That might be my goal is to reach wrong. Oh, I was going to give you that treat, but now you got to wait, buddy. So again, I have to make him wait <laughs> at least five seconds and then we follow it up with the reward. Also, if you're doing advanced training with a dog, when you get a dog from a good breeder, you're, you're paying for good odds. So the odds that he's able to do the things that I want him to do, which is protection work, tracking, high level obedience, wrong the odds are much higher. So yes, you can train most dogs. Most dogs are trainable, but some dogs are easier to train than others. But they can be difficult if you don't know what to do. So since he's very high drive, and when I say high drive with him, again, I mean play drive, prey drive, bite drive, food drive. These types of drives are really high, which is great if you're going to be training your dog. But if you're not going to be training your dog, these types of drives could cause issues because now you have too much dog and you're not doing enough with them. So boom, I touched the cabinet. Very good. Great session. When you first start teaching a stay, if you can't touch your pup, don't free them up. You want to be close enough to where when you release them, you can make sure you have treats. I'm like pretty much out. So I got crumbs. I got crumbs, buddy. That's it. So I'm just going to pet them and give them some affection. And I'm not going to use the terminal marker because I reserve the terminal marker for toys and food. And since I'm only going to be petting, I'm just going to go break. Yay! Nice job. Good boy. 
Very good. And let them run around and go get water or something like that. So a stay is very easy to teach once you know what to do. Notice I didn't yell. I didn't run at him yelling no, no, no a bunch of times. That's the whole purpose of a marker. It pinpoints the moment in time that the dog did something right or wrong or made a mistake. And in this case, what was the mistake? Stepping off of the platform. Did he do something bad? Of course not. Stepping off of this platform has never been bad for him, so why would it suddenly be bad now? We have to teach them the rules before we ever even think about giving a dog a correction. So start with this. Later, we can show you how we can start taking this to different behaviors as well as loose leash walking. But take your time with it, be patient, and if you want to give yourself a goal like I did touching the cabinet, you can, but don't make that mandatory because some dogs might have a little bit more spunk and they're not going to do the stay as easily as he did, even though that's the first time he did the climb stay. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, we will see you in the next one.